There are thousands of green teas on the market. Which is the best for you? In this video I'm going to speak about the different flavors of green tea compared to very different green tea with each other, Longjing and Bilochun, and also give you some tips to choose the best tea for you. Keep watching! Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of discovering and drinking genuine farm tea. If you are new here in our channel and you are looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. And now let's speak about green tea. There are actually both sweet and bitter green teas, but you can be sure of one thing. <clears throat> sweet green tea are rare and expensive. They are really top-notch quality. When we look about bitter green tea, there are two kinds of. There are bitter teas that are really good, they are meant to be bitter, and there are bitter teas that actually are bitter because they are simply bad. They are bad because, for example, they are too old or they are stored in the wrong uh, manner, or it could be that they have been harvested very late in the season. I will show you later an example of a very good bitter green tea and tell you a little bit more about that. But now, what if you don't like bitter tea at all? Then actually green tea is not necessarily the best choice, but there are other teas like white tea and oolong tea that are less bitter. In particular, white tea is a tea that never gets bitter. So I really suggest you to have a look at those um, tea for you. But it's not only about sweetness and bitterness. There are other characteristics, of course, of the flavors of uh, green tea. A green tea can be, for example, floral, like a floral longing. Uh, by the way, I will put uh, links in the description below of all the teas that I mentioned in this video. So at the end of the video, have a look at the description just below the screen. And um, I say that there are teas that are more floral, but there are also green tea that are very fruity, like for example, Yunsi, which is a tea from Yunnan that is, uh, has a, um, a tropical fruitness in its taste. And there are certainly uh, also tea that are nutty, like for example this uh, uh, longing here. Now, um, I will compare today two different uh, tea, the longing and the Birochun. There are actually uh, a lot of commonalities between these two teas, I will show you them to you, but uh, uh, certainly uh, not the taste. First of all, let's look at the leaves. Bilochun, it's here, it's very dark in color and it has uh, um, the shape of the leaf is curled. Uh, there is um, a lot of uh, white fuzz on the leaves, like you see on this batch here, and the more white fuzz you have, the higher the quality, because it means there are more buds into the tea. Longing has a very pale color and the characteristic of Longing is that the leaves are flat, they are really really flat and what is important is that um, for very high quality the leaves are small and more or less all of very similar size. Now Longjing comes from the Longjing village which is uh, a village very close to the downtown Hangzhou. Hangzhou is a huge city in Zhejiang province, 10 million people live in Hangzhou with an awful traffic and smog problem. So we personally prefer to source our longing from other places in the Zhejiang province that are not too far, but where the soil and the climate so is very similar to the one in the longing village, but there is no problem with air pollution. Now, longing style tea are actually produced in many, many places in China because longing is just so famous, even actually in Sichuan, for example, which is far western than um, Longing village, about 2,000 kilometers actually uh, in west direction, and there the climate and the soil is completely different. So make sure to find out where your tea comes from. It's important they come from the Zhejiang region, from the Zhejiang province, where the climate and the soil is similar to the one of Longing, so that you get the taste that you're searching. Traditional Bilbochun, like this one, is produced near Suzhou, which is a city more or less 150 km northern than Hangzhou. The two teas are actually produced in a very similar way. They are both dried in the wok, but the difference is that if you look at Longjing, 
the farmer really press the leaves against the wok pretty heavily so that it enhances actually the heat transfer from the wok, from the hot wok into the leaves and this gives this roasting nutty flavor of to the link to the leaves of longing that is actually so famous the leaves of bilochun as say they are also dried in the wok but in a bit a different way there are very different techniques but for example one that i've seen goes like that the leaves when they are still fresh and humid they are actually um, handled like a bread dough so they are really really move together like a bread dough and then when they come and become more and more dry there there is just a soft touch to keep them always in movement but without pressing them very like the opposite of lunging and towards the very end what i have seen that some farmers basically take the leaves and roll and take a little portion of the leaf and they roll that like you would do basically meatballs to give this curly shape to the leaf to the leaves and now let's steep the tea so we find out how they taste. I will steep them at uh, uh, the same water temperature and for the same amount of time. This water is at uh, 80 degrees C, centigrade, 80 degrees centigrade. I put just a little bit of water in it. And now uh, I will wait uh, a little bit of time. And here I am. More or less one minute has passed. Now I fill them a little bit more with water and then I start tasting. What is interesting actually is that the hair is just full of these fragrance, yeah, of both teas, yeah. They, they say they are very different. The longing has a very sweet taste. Mm, I just, I, I get uh, some uh, saliva here. And the, the, the smell of longi of uh, bilochun is deeper. Yeah, you see also the color, yeah? Uh, bilochun is so much darker and longing is so bright. Let's see how they taste. This is longing and this bilochun. The water of bilochun is also less clear because uh, uh, of all this fuzz that is in the leaves and dissolve into the water. I will start uh, with the longing. The body of the tea has a good heft. It's, uh, it's like yeah, a, a good chunk of meat, but it has also a lightness to it. And, uh, is very very sweet I find it very sweet and warm and there is this uh, characteristic chestnut note that is just so typical of high fire longing if you take the floral version of longing that has been um, fired at lower temperature you don't have that nuttiness it's more bright and floral mm. no bitterness at all Mm. and it has a warm taste that reminds me of uh, a toasted grain maybe let's see the longing it's a completely different taste what i like in bilo uh, in bilochun i want to say bilochun is more uh, thirst quenching is um, for me like in summer or whenever I've done sport and I'm really thirsty, I go for bilochun. It's like take my, my thirst away better than water. It is not floral at all. You know, uh, bilochun actually, uh, at least high quality bilochun, grows in, uh, um, in fields with uh, uh, fruit trees. And the fruit trees also shadow the uh, tea trees and this is important because it changes the soil the characteristic of the soil and also the way the leaves grow so if you have bilochun that is uh, produced in uh, 
in gardens with uh, fruit tree, it really gives this uh, typical fruitiness to it. It's one of the few green tea that is fruity. So if you would like to say, I want to find out a fruity green tea, I would go for this one. Yunsi is also very fruity, but in a different way. It reminds more uh, mango, maybe it's very tropical. But I think that by the time this video is online, uh, Yunsi will be sold out because we have just a little bit on stock, maybe next year. Yeah, and uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, so you have this uh, nutty and warm longing that is not at all bitter, and you have this fruity, yeah, and intense bilochun that is bitter, but in a very pleasant way. It's not that, you know, the kind of feeling that you put something bitter in your mouth and you feel, yeah, you feel like that. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed uh, this video. If you want more information about this tea, about green tea in general, have a look at the links below this uh, uh, video. And please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And should you be new here to our channel, don't forget to subscribe. And more and more video will come your way very soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.